So it's Monday and we're talking about music to work to. It has to be as ignorable as it is interesting. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeffo. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. I'm just a dude on a bike trying to evolve, learning how to evolve, hopefully. <laughs> as a filmmaker, as a writer, and as a human being, thank you so much for letting me join you on the ride this morning. Today we're talking about music to work to. And yes, we're already kind of down the trail, aren't we? It's because I had to stop at Push and Pour this morning. I was going to get you some video of that, but uh, it was packed. It's cool how in the summer, that place gets way busier in the morning. Hey, good morning. So that quote at the beginning was from Brian Eno, kind of an ambient musician, kind of. He kind of invented ambient music, I think. Popular ambient music, anyway, for listening to by regular people at regular times. So that's kind of one of the things. Hey, good morning on your left here. That's kind of one of the things that I've been thinking about recently because uh, over the weekend, I had a huge breakthrough on the Poco a Poco film script. Oh my gosh, or story, I should be clear. Not the script, the story. I think I've got the whole story now, which is fantastic. Hey, good morning on your left here. Man, it must have been really windy last night. There's so much debris on the trail. But yeah, so I, I was listening to different music than I usually listen to when I'm working on that film project. And so I was curious about the effects of the different music on my writing. Now, I, obviously music effects because, you know, there's different colors and moods and such. Uh-oh. You see what's coming up. Little Monday wall ride for you right there. So I was listening to Zoe Keating. She is a solo cellist, but she does a lot of extra, um, uh, she does overdubbing, like live. So she'll record herself while she's playing live and then reroute that in layers so that basically she can play like, she'll play like a bass line or she'll play a melody line and then she can repeat that using a pedals, pedals and a recorder. And she's able to end up, hey, good morning. She's able to end up uh, playing multiple parts at once, you know, because some of them are recorded in real time. It's super cool. I would love to hear her in concert, see her in concert. That would be awesome. Anyway, I was listening to Zoe Keating, which I don't usually listen to. And uh, the album Natoma. Uh-oh, lots of, lots of noise. Gotta keep the place looking pretty. It is that time of year, man. Everyone's out in their yards all the time. It's really nice. Got hot here, though. How is it where your ride is, man? It got so hot that, like, in the afternoons, hey, good morning. The, uh, the moisture just gets sucked right out of the earth and into the sky and we've had little thunderstorms. Hey, good morning. Anyway, I digress. I was listening to Zoe Keating and I got the whole story out, the whole thing. I wrote seven pages in about two hours. Well, that's a lot of work for me because I don't usually, I don't know why. It was a lot of work. I was very excited. The point is, I think the music that I was listening to had a little bit to do with it. Because there's different kinds of music, obviously. I've been listening to this Elgar uh, cello concerto, and I've been listening to this Havana's cello concerto. Both of them really lovely. But they've got these long thought patterns. And so I think for like writing productivity, having feeding myself those long thought patterns 
was great as far as concept, but in terms of being able to like actually get the thing done and get, get the writing out, I don't think it was working for me. So go back to this more song form, like what uh, Zoe Keating plays. They're all shorter pieces, you know, anywhere between three and five minutes. I think it helped me be more productive. Plus, it's, it's got it, it's a little more upbeat. So obviously we know this, we've read the studies over time that Mozart, if you listen to Mozart, there's something about the, the structural near perfection of his music that when played well, really helps our brains make connections because it like, it focuses the brain in particular ways. So Mozart, we know, is great to listen to for uh, cognitive tasks. You gotta be concentrated and trying to get something done. But I read this article out on Medium, which is kind of interesting. I don't know what I think of Medium because half the time it's just little bits of things digested from other places and, you know, people aren't really doing their own research and writing as such. Kind of like listening to some dude on a podcast <laughs> on a bicycle. <laughs> I know everything is self-referential. What's well, my podcast? Actually, it's your podcast. It's your ride. Do what you need to do on your ride. I do appreciate you being with, here with me this morning, though. Let me ride along with you. Is that a goat? That looks like a goat up ahead. Ah, no, it is absolutely not. It is someone sitting in a chair. Wow, how did I mistake that? Good grief. My eyesight is getting worse. I did actually have to up the prescription level on my, not prescription, I guess, but up the magnification of the readers that I use to read and write. Man, as we get older, I guess it's gonna happen, bound to happen. So this article was kind of breaking down the different factors that, in which music can be, help us to be much more pro productive. And, uh, some of those factors are the listenability of the music. If it's, hey, good morning on your right. Hey. If it's like pop music with lyrics, unless you're doing a mundane task, it is probably going to distract you. Like there's very few people re can read and write while listening to pop music with lyrics specifically. Any music with lyrics specifically. I'm gonna talk about something else later on that gets us around that. But basically music with lyrics is gonna generally be distracting if you're trying to work, if you have to think, if you have to concentrate. Now, if you're trying to uh, find music to work out to or get on your uh, bike to if you do that, which I do not recommend, I don't think you should be plugged into music when you're out on a bike. Situational awareness goes way down. <laughs> that's just, a, that's a personal opinion. Do what's safe for you. Please do what's safe for you. Obviously another thing, people like to listen to hard rocking music, fast rap or heavy metal when they're working out. I get all that. Totally makes sense. You're at the gym, you're on a treadmill. Yep, play the fastest music you can find. I recommend Sarasate Zagunerweisen, but it's a little bit of pathos in that that might uh, undercut the, your intention there. <laughs> so another thing that the, this article was talking about was the complexity of the music. The more complex the music is, the less it is going to be able to, uh, the less likely you'll be able to concentrate on anything else. Um, they were given some examples of Frank Zappa. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking like Tom Waits, I have a hard time concentrating on anything but Tom Waits. And again, it's because he's got lyrics and he's such a great storyteller. He's got all those amazing and interesting sounds going on within his albums. Even this one's just, just him at the piano. You know, he's, they're recording it from across the room on a creaky wood floor. And so you, you hear all these other things going on. So I can't concentrate to that stuff. So. The one other thing that they said is that if you don't control the music, generally, you're not gonna be able to concentrate to it 
or do any kind of productive work type at a computer kind of work. Unless you're a video gamer, maybe. I guess that would be at computer work, wouldn't it? All right. I like cutting in behind the library here because there's been a lot of folks on campus for orientations and such. I just prefer not to run into a bunch of people on a bike. So some of the music that, as I was reading several articles, they recommend, of course, Mozart is great. Um, it was one study that said that a group of radiologists discovered that they do much better work if they were listening to, specifically to Baroque music, the Baroque era of music as a time period between, let's see if I can remember this, between like, what, 1450 and 1600, is that right? It's basically during Bach's era. But Bach and Vivaldi are great, great, great for um, really focused attention, similarly to Mozart. But uh, Bach and Vivaldi have a little bit more of an intensity. Mozart's a little bit lighter, so like Mozart's great for reading too. Bach and Vivaldi are great for like working too, like if you're doing database work or some sort of like programming type work. So Baroque is your thing if you are a computer programmer. Now there's some jazz that could be a thing too if you're a pro computer programmer, so that works too. Then they were also talking about just nature sounds. Um, so nature sounds that don't involve a bunch of specific animal sounds, like bird calls a lot of times, like birds twittering is fine, but like uh, uh, an album of bird calls, evidently that drives people crazy. So don't think that you're going to be able to work great um, to bird calls. Oh my gosh. I'm a bit distracted, you can tell, yes. I'm so sorry, folks. I'm curious about great floors backing up the sidewalk there. <laughs> Let's go around this other way today because I think they're doing construction over there and I just don't want to get in their way. So the number one music, and this is what I've found personally too, is ambient music. So like a lot of Brian Eno stuff. I even like um, Philip Glass, just about anything by Philip Glass or Steve Reich. They're minimalist, minimalist composers, which means that harmonically not a lot is going on, but rhythmically and like the inner voices, the way that the harmoni harmony doesn't evolve is very, very interesting to me. So it's, uh, it can be very repetitive sounding. And uh, so that's really good for concentration. Ambient music like, um, like Zoe Keating is kind of ambient music. Brian Eno has a ton of ambient music. Then you've got your like, more like drone rock kind of stuff. I love that, like Godspeed You, Good Emperor, Godspeed You, Black Emperor, Earth, um, Squirrel. That's uh, Jim Jarmusch's band, filmmaker Jim Jarmusch. And I think Joseph Weizem, is that his name? Weizem, Weizem. I think he's part of Scroller. He played with him on one album for the uh, Only Lovers Left Alive soundtrack. The movie, Only Lovers Left Alive. So let's see, what are some of my other favorites? Those are my favorites, so that's kind of it. So if you're looking for music to work to during your work day, Try to find, oh, this, this is the other one. This is the one that um, is kind of the exception to the rule for me, is uh, Sigur Rós. Now, the reason is, is because they've got an untitled album, which is just um, parentheses. So they just like, they, they just show parentheses and that means that it's untitled. There is an, absolutely no title. Um, <clears throat> so there are tunes on that one that they actually made up the language and uh, Jonesy, the lead singer that made up the language, calls it Hopelandic, because they're Icelandic, they're an Icelandic band. And I find that listening to their music, because I don't understand Icelandic, um, that it doesn't distract me in the way that listening to other music with lyrics does. Now, it's an ambient kind of music also, so that has something to do with it. Well, folks, that is it. That is all I've got for you this morning, on this Monday morning back to the office. The weekend evaporated so fast. We got so much done though. It was a really great weekend. Um, how was your weekend? How's your ride? How are you on this fine Monday? Are you on, on your bicycle? 
Because if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. Maybe your bicycle is discovering new music. Hopefully, some of this is new music to you that you might enjoy for your work day if you get to sit or stand in front of a computer. We built, we built out Jennifer's standing desk yesterday. Ethan got her standing desk for her at the office, not at home. Folks, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. I hope that you enjoy your ride this Monday, this week. Look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Stay on the ride. I will see you out there. It's the only one we got, folks. It's the only one we got.